I'm Sheldon from We Are The Northern Lights. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I use Ableton Live and DMXs to control lights for my pop folk duo, We Are The Northern Lights. Um, before I begin, I just want to say I'm gonna break this up into several videos so it's not so long. And also because in this first video, I want to give some of those people that are super familiar with Ableton and DMXs um, an opportunity to really quickly understand what's happening. Um, but if you need some more details or want some of the tips and tricks um, to help speed up your workflow that I found, um, I'm gonna get more, much more into the weeds in the ensuing videos. Um, the only other thing I wanna mention is I am a hardworking musician like so many of you, and one of the reasons I'm doing this video is not only to give back to the musician community for all of the videos that I've watched and benefited from, but also because uh, my wife and I, uh, who make up We Are The Northern Lights, are trying to get our YouTube subscribers over a thousand so that we can start monetizing our videos and so that we can continue to afford being musicians. So if these uh, videos are helpful to you, we would really appreciate it if you would just do this and click subscribe. It would really uh, mean a lot and it's the best thank you, you could give to us. Okay, now to quickly go into this, um, this method works for me, but I am by no means an Ableton expert. So if you see something that uh, you can make more efficient, would you mind sharing it as a comment below to help all of us? I'll also mention I probably use a little bit more steps than are absolutely necessary, but I think that they're worthwhile because um, if I need to make any changes to my show in the future, I think a little extra time on the front end really helps save me a tremendous amount of time on the back end. This method uses the automation lanes, as you will see, and not the preset manager that comes with the DMXS plugin um, because I think it gives you a lot more control of the lights. And um, let me just show you exactly what it is that, uh, that I do with my lights. I'll get to an exciting part of this song. This is Where Your Heart Is by We Are The Northern Lights. That's me and my wife. And uh, here we go. So I think there's a delay in the video, but those are all changing exactly on time um, in, in my screen that you can see. Also, these lights are not set up as they're actually going to be set up during the show. I just wanted them all to be within the field of view that you can see what's happening here. Okay, so um, I'll explain. I always start with a template, but this is obviously a, a finished show. I use a couple set files for my process. Um, I use one Ableton set file for um, each song, and then I have a master lighting uh, uh, file that I will be copying and pasting all of this automation data into. Um, this is how I set it up. I have one audio track at the top that I import my audio into, and then I've got an individual track for each of my lights. Now I've got eight lights, as you can see here. There are 13 channels each, but I only use nine channels. So if I um, open uh, the disclosure triangle on say one of these lights, you will see that what I have here is an instrument rack with macros set up and an instance of DMX's instrument. Now I mention instrument um, specifically because um, after all of these lighting tracks, you'll see that you have a master lighting track. And within the master lighting track, we just have an instance of DMX's effects. So the lighting, chan the lighting tracks, I use DMX's instrument, and in the master lighting tracks, just effects. Again, the reason I do this is so if I need to make any changes, um, this master lighting track won't interfere with the um, DMX's instrument uh, instances up above, especially because they are overlapping channels that they are controlling. Um, no need for an instrument rack down here, but basically you can see if I again open this up, what I have here is, and let me get the plugins, what I have here is I have an, an automation lane visible for each 
of the nine channels that I want to control on each light. Uh, the reason that I use the macro is because number one, uh, if I need to remap things later, hopefully I'll just have to redo the mapping. I won't have to actually redo automation lanes. And number two is when you rename these, then up here, the automation lanes get named as well. And that way, no matter where I am, you know, if, I, if I'm, when I'm doing the actual design, um, you will see that um, I'll, I'll have all of these lanes open, something like this, and I don't want to see this. I, it's, it's much more difficult to know what I'm controlling if it looks like this as opposed to with the macro, which has specific labels. Uh, one being light one, A in this case being amber, for example. So my process is I design the show using all of the channels like this, okay, one by one. And then what I will do is I'll go into light number one. And when I'm satisfied with the way it looks, I'll go to the top automation lane. And this has a very specific order. It, I follow the same uh, method. So it's channels one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then light number two starts on channel 17. So it'll go 17, 18, 19, etc. But I'll, I'll come up to the top lane. I'll make sure I'm at the beginning. I'll copy uh, using command C basically. And then I'll come down to my master lighting track and it's already got the automation in there, but I'll go, um, if I were, for example, to, uh, get rid of the automation in these first nine, uh, that would be to here. Can I do it this way? Well, I can probably just go delete. Um, then I'll go up into the top, make sure I'm starting at the very beginning and I'll paste it in there. And there you can see I've got my automation uh, lanes. Uh, I'll do that for each light. Of course, light number two, I'll, I'll copy, you know, all nine channels uh, or all, all nine automation lanes. But here, when I paste, I'll go to channel 17, the starting channel for light number two. And I'll go through and do that for each of the lights on all 72 channels. I've got eight lights times nine channels. Then I will come through when I'm you know, satisfied. I'll copy all of the automation data from here from the master lighting track, command C. And here's how I get around the automation data not um, coming through when you try and copy clips from Ableton set file to Ableton set file. So I'll go to my master um, tour lighting set file. Okay, this is for my 2019. We'll get that loaded. I'm not going to save this for now just because in case I flipped anything. And um, in this case, I'm gonna, I've already got something built in here, but essentially if there were nothing, I would come up to the top. This DMX instrument, this track number one has a, a nearly identical except an instrument um, instance as the previous Ableton set file had in the master lighting track. But again, I've got it all in the same exact order. So that all I have to do is come up to that top address that top automation lane and paste and here's the lighting show now in my master lighting set my next step is basically whoops i'm going to keep that well i'm going to do that again because i like um, that it's already got the length of my file because now all i have to do is do shift command m whoops i guess i need to do it up here shift command m and now i've got a clip what I do is I'll copy that, go into my uh, clip view, insert a scene, make sure I'm in the right track, and I'll paste. And if you click on that scene, you'll see, boom, I'm starting my lighting show. Of course, at this point, you can go through and you can break this up into verse, chorus, whatever, and, and, and adjust the start and end points and loops and follow actions, which is what I'll do a little bit later on. Um, but essentially what I'll do is for the next song, I will come back in here and I'll delete this um, and I'll paste new automation, create another clip and paste it um, once more in here like that. Um, and it doesn't matter that it's 
you can't still see it in the session view, um, it will still work in the clip view. And I can show you that that works because One, here's a different two, song of mine. Three, four. All right, and if I were to start where your heart is. One, two, three, four. So that's basically my method. I hope you found this helpful. Again, um, if you did find it helpful and um, I, I, we're trying to get our subscribers up over a thousand, so we'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe. I'm gonna get into uh, more detail in the videos to come. So thanks for watching, bye.